Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking your time and joining us today. Uh, my name is Marta. I work in a data art company and I'm going to be today's uh, moderator of our event. So before we start, uh, I would like to say mm, that you may ask our speakers questions in the YouTube chat and we will read and answer them after each speech. And um, last but not least, before we start, I would like to add uh, that we are hiring DevOps professionals in data art right now. And if you are interested to talk to us, there is a link below the stream and also it will appear in YouTube chat where you may book a time with our recruiter, Hanya. She's a nice person, so I encourage you to reach her out. So to make us, uh, not to prolong, today we have three speakers performing and we will start with Karen Danielian, Senior DevOps at DataArt, who will talk about Ansible Galaxy. So Karen, please, you may start your presentation. Karen, Karen, I'm sorry, you're muted. Oops, sorry. Yes, now we can hear you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Karen, Senior DevOps from Data Art Armenia. Today we are going to discuss Ansible Galaxy. And uh, we have a presentation part and practical part also. Let's, <clears throat> let's start our presentation few words about me. I started my career in 2006 as an IT support engineer. Then I become systems engineer, then senior systems engineer. Since 2017, I am a DevOps engineer. And already more than uh, four years, I am working with uh, Ansible in everyday work. And, uh, let's jump to our agenda. Our agenda is uh, first point, what is Ansible Galaxy and how to create Ansible roles, where to store Ansible roles, role installation and dependencies. What is Ansible Galaxy? From official documentation, Ansible Galaxy is a hub for finding and sharing Ansible roles. And uh, to be more clear, it's uh, actually something like a uh, package manager where we can find uh, and install Ansible roles and resolve our dependencies. And this is uh, Ansible Galaxy's website. And uh, here we can find uh, a lot of roles. For example, we want to install some uh, web server, for example, Apache, we can just uh, find it in Ansible Galaxy and use. And you can see that here there are many roles and uh, actually we can try to download one of them, for example, this one. And we can use just this command and copy and uh, install it by Ansible Galaxy install command. And it actually download our role and we can see our uh, Ansible roles with all files and uh, with directories laid out. Okay, we can also create, uh, we can find our roles and we can also create uh, Ansible roles. And now I am going to talk about uh, how to create Ansible roles. Here we can see our directory layout with uh, role files and uh, actually there is a few ways to create a role and uh, first of all we can create uh, our role manually but actually it's not convenient and uh, we can create our directories and files manually but it's not convenient that's why we are going to use two tools uh, one ansible galaxy in it second there is a, a tool called ansible development kit Okay, let's try to create uh, Ansible roles by Ansible Galaxy in it. Mm, 
I'll create my clear my directory and we can create. And here we should specify our role name. And actually it created uh, instead of us our, our role and we can see our role directories and files. I'll describe which one for what in the next slide. And uh, we can use second tool, it's called uh, Ansible Development Kit. It actually open source project, uh, how to use it and uh, documentation about the Ansible, guild, uh, Ansible Development Kit you can find in GitHub. And uh, here we just need to copy this command to create our uh, uh, Ansible role. And actually it will ask some questions, for example, our role name, and we can choose license type. We can here specify author name. And, uh, since our time is limited, I am not going to deep dive in details. And uh, also since this all just for presentation, that's why I'll press just enter to set up the role by default variables. Here we can see two roles which we connected, uh, first one with Galaxy init command and it created uh, defaults directory for, uh, this is a file for default variables. Uh, there is a directory files for role files for role handlers. Also it created some meta information and we can uh, manually edit this in meta information. Also, there is a directory for our tasks, for our templates, it's directory for tests. Also directory for variables, actually default and the wars it's uh, both for variables, but they have uh, different priorities. Uh, most common I'm using uh, variables in defaults because uh, it has, uh, well, variables in defaults have uh, lower priority and I can uh, override them by playbook variables or extra wars. That's why I'm mostly using the variables in defaults. Also, it created for us some readme file and the uh, here there is a the second role which we created uh, by uh, Ansible Development Kit. Actually, we have the same structure. Difference is that uh, it uh, asks some questions and specify it in our meta main file. And uh, there is also a directory for tasks. The same of. Uh, for VARs, also it created some uh, Ansible lint file. It's actually config file for uh, Ansible lint. Ansible is uh, just uh, checking Ansible syntax. And here there is a same for YAML lint. It uh, checks, uh, it config file for checking uh, YAML uh, syntax. And here it created some Travis uh, YAML file and uh, some uh, uh, CI config file for GitLab CI here. There is a, some stages for run our Ansible role uh, in, in Docker, in AWS, in Azure uh, to test them. 
And here there is also directory for molecular, actually molecular is a test tool for ansible roles. We can test our roles by molecular. And uh, probably now we know how to create ansible roles. Okay, I clear. And let's talk about where to keep them and uh, where to store Ansible roles. Actually, you can store store our Ansible roles in USB drive, in Dropbox, in Google Drive, or our local machine. But uh, actually, it's a best option to keep them in Git. Why Git? Because Git provides us uh, version control, distributed development. It also simplifies work review process, and uh, it also simplifies dependency management process. And about dependency management process, we will speak later. Uh, even more, uh, we should have a separate repos for each Ansible role. And uh, I came across with the situation when uh, some company owned uh, approximately 50 roles, but uh, in, in, in a single repo. And uh, the problem, first problem was that uh, it was uh, difficult to maintain roles because when all the roles in a single repo, you can, and you need to do some work and you can create <clears throat> some branch from master or from development and uh, you can work on it approximately a week or even more and then you uh, when you create merge request or the same pull request actually you can notice that uh, you are already 144 commits behind and uh, you did for example 320 changes and uh, actually it's not convenient and uh, instead of uh, reviewing uh, 320 roles we can just uh, review few of them uh, if we have a separate uh, repos and uh, also when you uh, 100 uh, or more commits behind you can get uh, many merge conflicts and in this case you should spend a lot of time to resolve them and uh, next question is uh, role installation and dependency if you have uh, ansible roles or, or playbook which uh, depends on another roles it uh, best practice to add uh, dependencies section in meta main and uh, in requirements main files and uh, actually meta main file <coughs> dependencies in meta main file is mostly for uh, roles and uh, requirements uh, yaml file it uh, already for playbook i'll show it in practice Okay, here we can try to download some Ansible roles. Uh, actually, we downloaded some um, these roles from Ansible Galaxy. It the same, uh, we can, uh, instead of specifying uh, just role name, we can add uh, our Git, no, our Git URL and uh, download our roles uh, from GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket. And uh, third option is we can specify our uh, dependencies in requirements file and download it at once. Role, uh, here we have uh, examples of uh, two playbooks and uh, in first option, I edit uh, Ansible Galaxy install command uh, from which I should download uh, my role, which are called a Docker container. And uh, here I added uh, a separate task and executing it uh, on local host. And uh, actually, in, in pretask, I am downloading our role. And uh, but from now, already in tasks, I'm using uh, my the Ansible role. And the, 
And the next option is, uh, so I'm already separately installing uh, Ansible, uh, Ansible role and uh, I'm using uh, it uh, com in command line, I can install Ansible, a Galaxy install and uh, I can install my role separately. Then I, in playbook, I just uh, using uh, roles instead of include role and uh, I'm using roles and uh, uh, actually I'll describe uh, why uh, instead of uh, include role we should use roles and uh, for example if we have uh, four roles and we can use uh, both options are uh, uh, both options is acceptable are acceptable but uh, when we have for example 50 roles or even more and uh, they can depend that uh, to each other and it will a problem because when we use the include role it will just uh, install will install role D, then role C, then role B, and again, it will install role D, then role C. And actually in case we, in this case, we will get the situation when we installed uh, role D and uh, role C twice. And with four roles, it's not a problem. But if we have 50 roles or even more, we have some huge deployment, we will spend a lot of time on execution. And that's why uh, I'm mostly using, instead of uh, include role, just roles. And uh, last uh, <clears throat> slide of my presentation is about naming conventions. Uh, actually, oh, no, it, uh, all variables should have a unique prefix or acronym as a prefix. Uh, let's uh, imagine the situation when we uh, have uh, a playbook and uh, there we using many roles and uh, we should just uh, overwrite the value of one variable. For example, we instead of docker container instance name, we have uh, just variable instance name and we need to overwrite just this variable. In that case, uh, you know, it uh, actually there is an option, but it's uh, a bit uh, difficult. That's why if we have unique variables for each role, we can easily override it from playbook variables or from extra vars. And uh, now we can uh, try, I prepared some playbook and we can try to install our playbook. And uh, here we can see that uh, I'm in uh, user profile, Ansible roles di directory. And here there is uh, just nothing. And here I have a playbook and requirements file. My content is for requirements file. It's just a GitHub URL. And we can try to install our, our playbook. And we will get error because uh, Ansible couldn't find uh, our role in the following directories. Here, there is a desktop Ansible roles, user profile Ansible roles, user share Ansible roles, and etc Ansible roles. And uh, uh, he, it couldn't find our roles called uh, Ansible role docker container because we didn't install it. Now we should download our roles. You can see that in our uh, requirement file, there is a just a line and which specify to Ansible uh, role docker container, but it actually downloaded many roles. And here we can see that we have, instead of one role, we have four roles. 
because here we can see that I edit that roles as a dependency. And uh, I need to run some Docker image, uh, some Docker container, but for Docker container, at the first I should have some um, Docker host, installed Docker host. And uh, by this role, I am going to install Docker. And uh, here there is a virtual machine. And we can see that there is no Docker on it. Okay, now we can try to run our playbook. Since we have all roles, it easily runs. The installation process will take approximately 10 minutes, if we have question, we can try to answer it. Yes, exactly. Do we have uh, questions from our audience? Let's just wait a bit. If we don't have it now, maybe Karen, you can share um, contact to you and if somebody will have a question uh, he or she will drop a line yeah sure okay because i don't see any questions right now so uh if everyone if anyone has a question to karen he will share your contact so you can always contact him and ask him a question. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Karen. Uh, thank you uh, once again. And now we are having another speaker waiting. Uh, um, sorry, and, yes? uh, I, yeah, I want course. to just uh, just share uh, show the result. And yeah, now of course. We can see that it installs Docker. And then it will run, it will do some configuration with the server, then it will run our Docker image. And I want to just show it. And that's it. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, now we are having another speaker. Uh, I hope you are all staying with us uh, because now it's time for Jakub Muszyński, a DevOps engineer in Bluesoft company, uh, who is going to talk about practical use cases in Azure and Ansible. So uh, Jakub, the stage is yours. Yes, hello. I hope do you hear that you hear me. Uh, yes, everything is perfect. You can perfect. start. Okay. Um, so let's uh, let's start with this uh, presentation, where I would like to cover uh, some uh, introduction to Ansible and uh, with regards to the Azure users uh, that. Uh, yeah, some time ago I noticed that uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, Windows users uh, who does not know how to quickly start with uh, Shell and Ansible. And if you know Ansible already, uh, there will be some uh, tips and tricks uh, how to use Ansible uh, or how to leverage uh, Azure uh, um, features uh, for Ansible. And so, uh, short ag agenda. Uh, I will just quickly uh, describe you or tell you <laughs> why Ansible is good to use. Uh, we'll make this quick introduction to Ansible so we are on all on the same page for the vocabulary and, uh, and uh, topics uh, uh, I will be describing. And then we'll uh, look at three uh, 
parts of the Ansible and Azure integration, which is uh, how to uh, run uh, Ansible with uh, author and authorized to Azure uh, Cloud, uh, how to use uh, the dynamic inventory, and how to store secrets uh, in Azure Key Vault uh, so we do not uh, have the problems uh, with uh, secrets leaking. And we also can manage uh, cloud. Uh, based uh, secret storage as a service. And maybe I'll show, show you some uh, quick uh, Windows presentation and uh, I will try to do demo during the presentation. Let me just check the time, okay. Uh, so just quick info, if you'd like to contact me, I will drop also the email at the end. And my name is Jakub Muszynski and uh, that's the email. I'm currently working as a DevOps in Bluesoft, but I worked in a big and small companies, software houses, integration uh, companies. So uh, I've uh, seen and I used uh, multiple platforms and Ansible is always handy uh, for your needs. Uh, if you, uh, yeah, if you like gardening, uh, one of my hobbies is gardening. I, I have cats, I love, uh, love book, Metro Universe, but uh, this is the human part. And uh, I thought I would see some chat here where I could ask you a question. Do you know Ansible or at least what percentage of you know Ansible? Uh, but uh, I don't have a chat. So if I will get the statistics, I'll refer to that later. Uh, but I will assume that uh, there are some people who, who are new to Ansible and uh, I will answer the question with this slide why it's worth to know or to learn Ansible if you're new. It's the fastest growing and the uh, best uh, well covered. Uh, and by the way, the easiest uh, orchestration to all the market uh, at the time. And uh, just to, to, to give you perspective, there are four main tools on, Mars, uh, on the market for orchestration. Uh, Ansible and uh, SALT are written in Python and uh, just to show you the two lines, that's uh, more or less Python is getting uh, really good. Uh, well, uh, it's number two uh, programming language at the moment, so it's uh, very popular. Um, Chef and Puppet are also uh, well well known on the market with established uh, market share. But uh, out of those tools, Ansible is uh, the easiest, uh, the most elastic uh, for now. Uh, well. If you'd like, this is the joke I make uh, that uh, yeah, in Ansible um, manifests and scripts are written in YAML and you have to pay attention to the indention of the code because the, uh, uh, this, is the, this is defining the data structures uh, in, the, uh, <clears throat> in the manifest. Uh, and if you would, uh, yeah, you can later uh, read more about Jinja and YAML. Uh, but uh, don't be scared if you see some manifest or playbook which looks like uh, the, the one presented on the screen. It's just some list, dictionaries and key values uh, that describe uh, what we are going to do. Uh, quick uh, introduction, uh, well, the vocabulary. Uh, in Ansible, we are executing small uh, pieces of software which are called modules. Uh, those pieces of software can be executed uh, standalone without the script or playbook in a console with the uh, wrapper Ansible, then you pass the minus M uh, module name and some, some host or pattern where it should execute. Now, when you later execute this uh, or place those uh, manifests into the, um, uh, the those uh, names of those, uh, those um, programs, those modules into uh, a manifest uh, playbook or a role. It is uh, called a task and you execute it, execute some tasks. Um, and the playbook is uh, the name we refer uh, to when we describe a manifest or, or something which is uh, defining an, an execution of, uh, of uh, some um, plan uh, that we are going to declare where we declare or uh, configure some uh, some scope of our environment. Mm. And there's another concept, another word inventory. 
inventory it's a collection of uh, objects uh, uh, virtual machines hosts routers basically everything with an ip address because after all you need to apply your manifest or playbooks to some objects uh, and uh, well the ip or host name is <laughs> is the best definition uh, where to apply some some of your uh, configurations uh, and uh, everything uh, requires variables because uh, you, you want to parameterize uh, parameterize uh, some of your configuration so expect to see some variables in the ansible uh, world mm, as i mentioned you execute ansible uh, by uh, you can execute some modules or these uh, small programs uh, um, directly from your command line. Some of them um, take uh, uh, take some parameters or variables uh, arguments to, uh, that um, are used to to uh, manage the execution, and you can uh, execute. Uh, playbooks with a similar command and simple playbook and in the playbook you have some definition of the tasks that are, you are going to execute so that would be for the quick introduction to ansible uh, and for you uh, how does it relate to azure for those who would like to uh, quick start with ansible uh, maybe you don't have the console or you don't have uh, the um, yet configured environment to run Ansible with your Azure environment. One of the ways to uh, run uh, the uh, Ansible is to use the uh, Azure shell. So I have the one uh, already opened in the another window. And uh, with this Azure shell, you can actually, there is actually the Ansible and a lot of uh, nice commands pre-installed. So You can see that uh, the, there is installed Ansible version 2.9.11. It's not the newest one, but uh, you can quickly start work with this Ansible uh, version uh, when, you, uh, when you have Azure account. Mm, and uh, as an example, I will use uh, this uh, particular uh, um, Azure samples uh, uh, repository. So you can do the same at your uh, at your environment. I will clone this. So what I just did, I cloned the repo from the uh, this uh, official. Uh, samples uh, repository and when when we browse it there are multiple uh, ready to use playbooks that uh, uh, well does not require <laughs> um, in deep knowledge in order to to create some action uh, Jakub sorry uh, can we make a bigger font please ah okay it's not my console it's the shell but I believe we can yeah I will later switch to different console. I just want to present uh, this ready to use one. Uh, so what we can do right now, we can, uh, let me see. Uh, we can, ex for instance, there is a ready to use uh, playbook uh, to create uh, virtual machines and uh, whole resource, uh, let me just present it to you. Uh, that creates resource group, uh, virtual network, subnet, uh, access policies, passwords, everything in the end install some uh, some host in your uh, in your environment. And uh, even if you don't know <laughs> exactly how Ansible works, you can still uh, still execute this playbook. It's actually require uh, def to define a resource group name and VM name. You can pass it, you can either uh, define those variables uh, in a var section, or put uh, some something here. Yeah, I want to save it. Or you can uh, you can pass those variables. Uh, it's all described uh, in the readme here. If you would later would like to uh, to start using this uh, this uh, solution. 
I pass the variables uh, as the extra bars to the playbook. Uh, actually, this VM was, I, I've already executed it, let it run just for a second. Uh, this would create the VM name Kuba in uh, resource group Kuba123. Uh, we can quickly jump to uh, already created virtual machines and there's VM Kuba in resource group Kuba123. Uh, and that's the uh, the quickest, the fastest uh, way to start uh, to start uh, quite uh, advanced execution of Ansible playbook in Azure. Uh, So uh, you can also, uh, yeah, so that, that was the presentation of uh, quick uh, shell execution uh, to create your own virtual machine. But Ansible can be used to um, way, more, uh, way more advanced uh, um, executions. Uh, Ansible actually, uh, exposes uh, all of the Azure Poltar and uh, Azure uh, CLI functionality uh, through uh, specially written uh, Azure modules. And uh, we, in the new, uh, uh, new Ansible, you can expect uh, or you need to install AZ collection uh, in order to have this, those modules. In the old Ansible, you had to install, uh, install special uh, Python package. Uh, in order to, to use them. And uh, just a quick, uh, well, introduction. Uh, this uh, covers all of the Azure RM um, uh, resource uh, definitions to the to the, inside the module. So you can create virtual machines, networks, resource group, uh, manage uh, case, keys, uh, Everything you need to do in Azure, you can do with Ansible. You can define it as a code with Ansible. Uh, and uh, I've presented you already the way to um, execute Ansible from the Azure Shell console. But uh, for those who, who have uh, Linux boxes, uh, you would like to integrate uh, directly from your shell um, and uh, for Windows as well. Uh, so there are a few ways uh, that you can you can start uh, using Ansible uh, from your shell, from your console. Uh, you need to somehow uh, log in uh, uh, in order to allow Azure to communicate with your, uh, uh, to uh, allow Ansible to communicate with uh, your Azure uh, API and Azure uh, resources. And there are three ways to do it. You can uh, log in and authenticate with Active Directory. You can use a uh, dedicated service principal uh, and store the, uh, the files in, these, uh, in the credentials uh, um, in your um, computer, or you can log in with uh, Azure CLI. Mm. The easiest is to, to use AZ login, uh, open the website, uh, Maybe let's 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 do it. We just need to uh, put the the ops code because I want to log in inside the browser. Let's use this one. Sorry. So you get the code, you enter the code. It would ask you for the uh, which account. I'm already authorized in this browser, uh, so soon enough, uh, this will my user is logged in, and right now I can interact uh, with Azure resources uh, through AZ login, and uh, Ansible can also utilize those um, those credentials for me, uh, so I can. So all of the Ansible modules uh, can right now. 
connect uh, to Azure uh, <coughs> to Azure uh, resources. Uh, another option is to create a uh, um, service principal uh, for uh, through CLI, like this exit commands, or through the browser. And we need to uh, extract and store in a file um, in the uh, Azure uh, path in our local, uh, uh, local uh, host. Uh, such parameters like subscription ID, client ID, secret, and tenant. And uh, we would also need for key vault uh, an object ID, but I'll get to that later. Uh, and uh, how to do it? Uh, if we create it with the exit uh, CLI command, we would have those, uh, those information uh, on our screen. If we create it through the portal, we go through exit portal, we create the new uh, app registration. We, we can have uh, most of this uh, information uh, derived from the screen. And uh, one of the way uh, to have the password is to create a, a certificate in screen in this app registration scope uh, for some time. Uh, and uh, it will be visible for, uh, for a while um, until we refresh the page. So please copy it and, and store it in the file if you'd like to use that for accessing Azure resources. And uh, yeah. If you have it ready, you can run Ansible from console. So uh, let's, uh, I've already logged in. Uh, so I use this uh, first option. And uh, as you see, I have the same playbook VM create uh, that we've already uh, had in the examples. I uh, have it on my local machine just, so this is uh, the one of uh, the examples VM create and I will run it from my uh, from my uh, my host mm. this uh, we'll get in a moment to the concept of inventory but at the moment uh, uh, so this right now I'm running Ansible version 2.95. So a few things will change in uh, in the you will see it differently in the newest version Ansible 2.10, uh, where the collections are already uh, introduced. Mm. I've already created this host a moment ago, uh, but uh, um, here uh, what we are doing we are executing uh, creation of the virtual machines in Ansible. Uh, in the Azure uh, Azure environment, and if we go to virtual machines, uh, that was this uh, test VM that was created uh, a moment ago. So you can execute uh, Ansible uh, from your local computer without any any issues. And I said that, um, well, we'll get to the concept of uh, dynamic and static inventory, because uh, right now we are using uh, Azure API uh, for the communication uh, with the Azure, um, the Azure modules were communicating with uh, Azure API in the cloud. But, uh, well, later we would like to connect to the host of resources uh, also through SSH or through some other, other means. So we need to have uh, to know where to connect, uh, which object, which objects are uh, are we going to connect to, and uh, one of the options is to have the static inventory where we would uh, quick simply take the IP addresses uh, that we of, of the machines that we have created. Um, so you can go to that place, copy the IP address, store it in the file, and um, say, okay, I want to communicate to this machine with this IP address. This is okay. Of course, some of the options, uh, static inventories are good for the beginnings, but later, we'll, since we are in Azure, we would like to, uh, to utilize uh, the ability to list the host uh, that we have uh, created dynamically and refer to them through some other means. And uh, 
here uh, comes the concept of uh, dynamic inventory. And uh, with Azure, you have uh, two tools, uh, or at least two, two options. Uh, there, are, there are scripts that connect to the Azure API uh, and uh, communicate with the Azure uh, to extract the list of your resources, virtual machines and other resources. So later you can refer to them to them in your uh, scripts and uh, dynamically uh, communicate with your uh, host. And uh, I have an example uh, I will show you. Uh, one of the ways, or in the older Ansible, uh, you had to create the, uh, uh, the you had to copy or inject into your uh, yeah store on your computer the script uh, Azure RM Pi with, with some configuration. And you had to create those uh, credentials files, uh, service principal uh, or, or your um, user uh, credentials. You had to store it in the files, in the Azure credentials file uh, in the specific uh, place. Uh, since uh, Ansible 2.8, uh, there is also Azure RM plugin that is uh, more native to Azure. You don't have to manually do any actions. I will present you in a moment both of the ways. Here's how it could work. You store Azure RM and Azure INI in some of the directories uh, along with some group bars and host bars. And this, uh, this could be uh, considered a dynamic inventory for your uh, Azure environment. Uh, for uh, Ansible collection, for Ansible 2.10, uh, you need uh, this uh, inventory configuration uh, file that uh, which defines the way how, uh, how the hosts are yeah, dynamically uh, grouped for you. Mm, and uh, you need to point to that file. Let's, let's go to the examples. So uh, here I have this uh, my Azure SAP Azure um, RM uh, definition of the host for Azure Dynamic Inventory. Mm. Which defines that I want to list all of the hosts, all of the uh, resource groups uh, from all of uh, all of the locations because uh, default is all. Maybe I should also tell you uh, where did I take it from so it's not the uh, uh, not the secret. Mm. Sorry I had it open just for you. Uh, so Sorry. This comes from uh, this um, example comes from the official Azure RM uh, documentation on the Ansible website. Uh, you either use uh, older uh, host definition or newer host definition for the uh, let's use the uh, so pay attention which uh, documentation version do you use because the uh, this example host uh, the example uh, host definition uh, configuration may be different. I've copied uh, this into my computer, stop, saved it in the file, and I've installed Ansible Galaxy collection uh, in my computer. And right now, mm, Second, I can use this uh, um, this inventory, for instance, to ping all of the hosts or list. Uh, here I will list hosts, uh, list all the VMs that I have uh, defined in the uh, in the uh, Azure. Oh, I have already created those virtual machines for for this uh, presentation. And uh, well, one of the things, uh, since you have those hosts uh, returned from Azure, you can use the groups or I don't have uh, 
it is red because I don't have defined uh, the proper password to access those hosts. But uh, it, this is just to present you that uh, I'm using Azure plugin, Azure RM uh, module in order to return uh, hosts and directly from Azure, uh, Azure website. Those are, if we go to virtual machines, you can see that uh, I've returned to my console all of the hosts uh, from Azure. Mm, there is also another way. Mm, I told you that there, there was the older, uh, older uh, inventory script. And uh, okay, I can use this Azure uh, inventory. Uh, I will show you in a moment from a different perspective in order to get all of the defi defined uh, resources and try to ping them. So some of the hosts uh, are properly defined in my inventory and I can access, access dynamically uh, resources in Azure. Here is just a quick uh, presentational connection, but if you know Ansible, uh, you know that those hosts are already uh, defined, so we can use them uh, in the playbooks and roles. So uh, just quickly, uh, follow the official Microsoft or uh, Ansible tutorial in order to ha um, to get familiar how to use uh, how to use this Azure RM plugin. Mm. As I said, you only need to install the plugin collection, uh, copy this um, this uh, file into uh, into your uh, directory, store store this content as a file, and you can interact uh, with the virtual machines the way I've presented uh, before. <coughs> Sorry. Mm, and the last uh, tough thing uh, in the, uh, where we can utilize the, the Azure uh, functionality for out Ansible execution uh, is uh, to store secrets and passwords. And uh, if you'd like to run the uh, infrastructure as a code with Ansible, uh, the native Ansible solution is called Ansible Vault. This is the, uh, this is the tool which can uh, encrypt some files uh, in a way that uh, you store them uh, in an encrypted version in your repository in, or on your disk but you can transport so no one can see the content of it but uh, ansible has the way to dynamically decrypt uh, only in the memory the content of, of it and use it there is this uh, wrapper for ansible vault uh, that you can uh, encrypt decrypt view and edit those files since it's no nothing secret, I can show you the content of it. There are some some secrets, uh, so you can store your secrets uh, along with your code uh, in your Git repository or in your uh, in your computer. But uh, this is the problem uh, if you'd like to share it, uh, because you, as you you probably guess. I have uh, somewhere hidden the key to decrypt those uh, messages. So you either have to share the key uh, or you have to uh, yeah, find another solution to, to store your secret. And here comes a really nice feature for uh, Azure that you can use uh, with your Ansible uh, playbooks and Ansible infrastructure uh, definitions because uh, you can use a key vault, uh, Azure key vault, as your uh, secret storage for Ansible. And uh, 
there are modules uh, called Azure RM Key Vault, Azure RM Key Vault Secret, and right now um, they are in the collection, in Ansible uh, Azure RM collection. Uh, that allows you to uh, extract or put some information from the Azure Key Vault. Uh, and yet still you can manage also those Key Vaults on the, uh, through the Azure. So you can uh, assign permission to those Key Vaults to some particular users or service principals. So uh, the, uh, the headache of uh, key storage or, and key security and uh, key auditing all of those things can be uh, related uh, passed to the uh, Azure service. Uh, those modules uh, for the older Ansible are in the Azure preview uh, modules. Uh, for the newer Ansible, you just install this uh, um, Azure collection that I showed you before and you would get, get it uh, in your scope. So, uh, as we said, there is a problem of variable placement. And uh, well, if you don't know where to place variables, uh, always store them in group bars. Uh, but uh, as I said, some variables should not be stored in the inventory. So uh, it is a good idea to, uh, to use the, this Azure Key Vault and lookups in order to extract these uh, secrets directly from the cloud. Mm. Maybe let's, uh, let's have a quick demo how this could look like. So I have here prepared a quick presentation for management of the Azure Key Vault. Mm. And this uh, playbook can create uh, some of the, uh, well, example key vault, assign permission to this key vault, um, and uh, store a create the secret in the Azure key vault. And of course, uh, later extract the secret uh, from the key vault and present it to the screen. Mm. I'll run it and in a moment I will show that that was already created uh, and before I made this demo. So uh, everything would be green already. Uh, in a moment I will show you the, the uh, product of this execution. Mm. Right now, uh, I'm creating and writing a secret inside the uh, Azure Key Vault, and I've retrieved the secret with the uh, with the uh, another module. Uh, the value is uh, as you presented, as you see on the screen. But if we look on the Azure side. This actually created the, uh, this uh, key storage with the uh, proper permissions. As you might see, I have no permissions right now to, uh, to even list these secrets. Let me quickly uh, present you why, because only my uh, application, uh, so the service principle I've defined uh, in, to access uh, that key vault has, has the permissions uh, to the secret, so uh, you can manage permissions as the uh, as the code uh, with Ansible as well. And yet, uh, since uh, I've assigned the proper, uh, so I've assigned, uh, I've created the service principal, and I've assigned uh, permissions to that service principal. Let's quickly have a look. So uh, you know where it comes from. The service principal uh, has the access to interact with the uh, secret stored 
in this uh, in this uh, kibble. Uh, so you can imagine that with uh, with uh, um, that resources, with uh, groups uh, and uh, proper user management, you can store secrets uh, for your uh, Ansible playbooks directly in Azure. Mm, you can control it as a code, or you can control it through the uh, through this uh, mm, through the portal, and I have this uh, this uh, service principal. Uh, here is the application ID uh, that is allowed to uh, interact with this uh, key store, and uh, I will show you one uh, particular thing. So this is the application ID, the client ID. Uh, that I, I have uh, taken from the service principal. And I will show you one trick because this is uh, how to get the object ID or the key vault object ID. So the one that is later uh, used in order to, uh, to interact with this uh, key vault. This is uh, one of the parameters that you have to pass to uh, in order to manage extract uh, your key vaults. Uh, one of the ways to get this uh, object ID is to use exit command. This is uh, this is something that is not well documented. That's why I'm presenting it to you. And uh, we will be looking for this uh, object ID. Uh, that would be your object ID for the key vault. Mm. If I did it right, yes, this is this object ID. And uh, if you configure it this way, you can uh, interact with your uh, with your key vault through the code. Uh, what could we do with it? Uh, because I presented you just the way to interact with Azure Key Vault. Uh, but uh, actually, we can use this key, uh, this key stored. Uh, in the in the vault, let's just quickly have a look. Uh, I'll assign permissions uh, to myself quickly so I can present it to you. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, some passwords stored here uh, in the key vault. Mm. And I, I, I can actually use this password in another playbook in order to create uh, virtual machines. Mm. So I've added to this VM create uh, playbook example that uh, we've, I've shown you from the sample examples for Azure. And I'm actually uh, declaring that I'm going to uh, extract uh, from this uh, tenant, from this object, uh, from the key vault, uh, sample key vault uh, 2009. Uh, 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 I'm going to extract the uh, password, VM password, and use it for the um, interaction or for the Mm, as the password for the machine. Mm, I think I've already run this. Uh, so this VM is created. Uh, let's me, let me list the host. Ah, not here. Um, I will take Uh, sorry, uh, not this, not this content. I can use directly this Azure RM uh, plugin. Uh, 
or I can take some of the host uh, definition directly from the virtual machines, since that would be faster. Uh, I've created this one. Oh, here's the host list as well, already defined. So not that one. Uh, went to, to, I wanted to SSH with a password to that machine uh, that I've created. I believe that was this one. Okay, it's a good sign, it's asking for the password. Right now, what was the password? Uh, one second, let's let's extract the password directly from the vault. And I can, uh, so I've used this uh, password stored in the key vault in order to get to the VM. Uh, okay, so you can actually use the secrets uh, that uh, uh, are stored and managed by Azure in order to uh, create, configure uh, some of your sources. Uh, some of your databases, passwords uh, that you can describe with Ansible. Uh, what I wanted to also to show you, it is that it's possible to uh, also manage a Windows host. Uh, and uh, well, just a trick, uh, since the modules are written for Windows, they usually have a different name. So instead of uh, the modules for Linux that uh, you might expect that are called uh, ping, uh, they usually have a win in the name. And uh, I have uh, already prepared uh, the host and an inventory. I will show you in a moment how, uh, but you see that from the Ansible, I have uh, connected maybe once more, I have connected to some host and I can later present you that it's a Windows host with the module WinPing. And uh, I have already created also <clears throat> some uh, playbook that on all the hosts defined uh, in the Windows group and would uh, install uh, some, uh, some packages like 7-zip, uh, configure or copy some directories, uh, execute some commands. So let us uh, let us uh, execute uh, some playbooks. Uh, uh, sorry, with that inventory. And uh, I will in a moment show you where I got the or how it is configured. In this uh, verbose output, you might see that I'm using WinRM, uh, user Ubuntu, and a specific port for that connection. Right now, uh, on the Windows, uh, the Chocolate uh, is installing 7-zip automatically. Uh, in a moment, it, it will succeed. I will go to, to more important part. So I've used uh, the example for the Windows host creation from this uh, um, from this uh, GitHub repo with examples that I've presented you before. Let's just quickly uh, get to that place. This is this uh, uh, VM create Windows example. 
and uh, yeah user password here it is uh, defined <laughs> for the moment statically uh, as in this example and uh why after the cre vm creation this ansible playbook actually also configures vm uh, win rm extension and uh, opens a port or wait for the port open uh, so you can later communicate uh, with that machine and important part for it is also the specific inventory i have created for uh, this is a static inventory for this connection where I defined uh, that I want to use this WinRM port and WinRM connection uh, with basic transport and here statically user and password but this is secondary uh, in order to, to connect to this uh, Windows host and as you see everything succeeded uh, I successfully managed uh, Windows host uh, with Ansible. And uh, yeah, since the username is Ubuntu, I couldn't st stop myself not to show Windows with Ubuntu. And uh, I think that would be the part um, that, yeah, if you have questions or we have chat, uh, please raise uh, questions. I'm not, I don't see chat, Marta, so I'm not sure if... Yeah, sure. If Let's any... wait a bit if we have some questions. Mm -hmm. Sorry if for I'm... such a mess, but uh, we have a little bit of time difference. That's why previously uh, we just we were late, but I can see that Karen has already answered the questions. Mm -hmm. So... Since uh, I will give you as a bonus, one of the things that I always uh, try to uh, introduce to people. Um, this is the uh, really nice uh, um, for, uh, video uh, from the conference I'm, I once attended, uh, Pyrath uh, 2015, with the guy Brandon Notes, Rhodes, and uh, it's about how uh, you can uh, well tell if you are productive or not just uh, just uh, well take the, take the note watch it later and i recommend it to everyone in it to uh, yeah use the best practices uh, for <laughs> in your in your uh, tool set so this is for the productivity mm, i will later uh, post this uh, github um, this project on the github uh, with the playbooks I used. If you'd like to, to get them, uh, yeah, write me an email. Uh, or we'll, I'm not sure if it was recorded or not. If, if it was, <laughs> we can post the link later as well with the recordings. Yes, of course, it, it will be posted later on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you might have some, uh, some uh, questions on how I did configure the uh, Azure RM plugins. It's uh, in the documentation. <laughs> So if you, uh, I did not stop uh, directly to, to show you how to configure which parts, but uh, depending on the, on the version, you, you either, uh, yeah, use um, some Python modules or use this Ansible collection. Uh, if you, if you would yeah, face any obstacles, just, just contact me. Okay, uh, I think we waited enough. I don't see any questions from our audience. So I guess if something comes by, uh, you are going to share uh, some contact mm -hmm. to you, right? There is an sure. email. Are you going to share a GitHub uh, link also? Yes, yes, I will push this okay. to the GitHub later. Because okay, I, great. I believe that the key, uh, key vault storage is the, <laughs> the most important for Azure and Cebu. So yeah, hope that you would enjoy it. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Jakub. Yeah. Thank you thank once you. again. I hope that you will uh, join us uh, uh, during next uh, DevOps IT talk next year. Why not? <laughs> it was very yes. nice to host you. Yes. All right, you. so uh, thank you once again. And uh, last but not least, we are having one more speaker, uh, Radosław Maziarka. 
Uh, Radosław is a technical product owner, trainer, and consultant. So Radek will talk about cl cloud infrastructure with Terraform. Uh, so um, thank you, Radek, for being with us. And I guess we can start. Yes, thanks for having me here. I hope that you will enjoy my talk. Let me uh, prepare for a second to share my screens and um, adapt other tools. Okay, is it set? Okay, let's start the presentation. Okay, and you should see my screen and my presentation. So, Marta, could you yes, just everything? Continue? Yes, yes, everything oh, is visible. Okay, okay. So, thanks for that. And uh, hello once again on my presentation: uh, cloud infrastructure management with Terraform. And I'll try to introduce you to to this tool and show you a quick. Uh, um, instructions how to use it uh, on a daily basis, how to make the first steps uh, in this tool, or um, another speaking, uh, how to uh, start your cloud journey, how to run new services, how to play with it, how to be uh, happy with creating, with uh, trying a new shiny thing, but at the end, not to end up with the configuration, not to end up with the situation when you have a uh, lot of different services um, uh, lost um, uh, when you don't know which services belong to whom and uh, you know and you end up with this situation and you have like the big ball of mud but not in your code but in your infrastructure uh, Towards about me, my name is Radek Maziarka. As I said, uh, as it was said before, I work as a technical product owner, as a solution architect. Uh, I blog uh, on uh, radekmaziarka.pl when uh, where this presentation is uh, already um, accessible, and you can catch me on uh, Twitter at Radek Maziarka, and I will share the link to these presentations there. Um, Let's start with a simple plan of this presentation. First, uh, at the beginning, I will uh, show you how to start with, the, uh, with this tool. And then I show you some, uh, some features and how to run a CI CD based on Terraform. Um, then some additional features and I will sh share with uh, you my live system that works based on the Terraform. Uh, then I will um, show some additional features, but I won't uh, dig into details. And then I will share some good practices over uh, running Terraform in production in your life system. Uh, but first, let's uh, go back to some basics. Mm, let's cover some mm, some basic uh, stuff like uh, what's uh, what kind of uh, tools do you use to run your scripts? Was uh, to to run your infrastructure to manage your infrastructure? I think the most base one are the script are, that are shown currently on the screen, some kind of script that you, to, you run to create some kind of service. As, as you can see uh, here, maybe uh, you are in common with the script, you are called script to create services in uh, Azure Cloud. So you can create a virtual machine, a SQL failover group, some kind of batch jobs, et cetera, et cetera. And this kind of scripts are called imperative scripts. So you run them, against some cloud provider, against some service provider, and you tell exactly what uh, you want to do. So you, you tell this cloud provider, create me the resource A, B, C, and D. And this cloud provider creates for you these services. Later on, you, you, uh, you order this cloud provider to delete some services, to, to adapt them, to change them, etc. This is the one way of, um, managing your infrastructure. The another way of man managing infrastructure is uh, called like declarative approach uh, by declarative scripts. Uh, in this kind of approach, you uh, des describe what you want to have, not, not how to achieve it, but what you want to have at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And is this, with this kind of solution, you uh, with this kind of solution, you have something in between that manage, manages uh, your communication with, with service providers. So 
so I order to this something in the middle, this this tool, I that I want to have these four services. And at the, uh, at the beginning, it asks your cloud provider, um, what's the state of these services? And then when it got the response, it's, um, it's, uh, it knows that that's only a few services are missing. So we don't need to create the service A and B. And we only need to create services C and D. Uh, later on, when you change some configuration for some services, then it can automatically run the um, change scripts to adapt, for example, B service uh, for your needs. But still, from your perspective, you only have a, a situation when you just declare what you want to have. That is why it's called declarative approach. And this kind of a declarative approach has a, a few um, uh, advantages over imperative sc uh, scripts. The first is that we have the built in the in the potency. So we can run the scripts repetitively and have the same output because we declare what our end uh, our end solution is. And, and therefore, we don't need to hack this kind of situation. OK, we have this group created, and then we need to adapt to the situation and so on. It's much easier to run it, uh, for example, on a daily basis. Mm. And it's because uh, the, this kind of declarative uh, approach has uh, inside of these tools, um, there is built the option to manage your state. So uh, this tool knows what's the, uh, the, uh, what's the state of your infrastructure and creates only a differentiative uh, scripts to adapt your infrastructure to the required uh, required uh, solution and because of that uh, it's much easier for you to uh, to focus on what you actually need what not uh, on uh, how to do it but on on your end solution it's much easier for you to to have your your required your desired uh, state inside your code not the hacky way how to achieve it you can run it on a uh, in your in your CI CD pipeline, you can have it, uh, you can create a diagrams on based on that, et cetera. So you have your um, uh, your ending state inside your code. And uh, because of the uh, the rules that are built of this, uh, these tools, at the beginning, it's, it's, it's uh, more difficult to get to understand how this tool works. But at the end, it's, uh, it allows us to have much simpler uh, management of your infrastructure because uh, all of these situations are linked together. All of these resources are linked. And therefore, uh, this tool manage it for you. You don't need to have some, um, so uh, you need to, you don't need to put so much attention into managing your infrastructure. Okay, but it's only a simple like introduction. Let's uh, let's move to some like desired uh, part of this infrastructure, the the code and the demos. Uh, and of course, uh, it will use a Terraform, the the, the tool that uh, is the part of this uh, this presentation. And the Terraform is a tool created by uh, by HashiCorp. And it's used uh, and it uh, uses its own language called uh, H. QL, uh, which uh, was created, uh, mm, which is dedicated for this kind of management. So it's much easier for you to understand what you want to achieve by this tool, how to manage your infrastructure, because this uh, this language was, uh, cr uh, was created just for this um, idea. From my perspective, it's much easier to use it than, uh, for example, uh, RAM -A scripts in uh, Azure. Um, and Terraform uh, manages your whole infrastructure, manage the the whole um, um, the the creation, the deletion um, changes inside of your um, cloud infrastructure, and it allows you uh, not to not to focus on uh, the order of the uh, of the creating the particular services because it. Uh, has it all already like um, implemented inside of it. So you just run the script and it has a, a desired result. Uh, Terraform is multi-cloud and to be uh, to be strict multi-provider. Uh, so it can you it can be used uh, to manage not only a one cloud but multiple clouds, multiple different providers. So for example, um, Cloudflare, Auth0, uh, and other um, services like that. 
uh, and it has its own like syntax and different features to allow you to manage your infrastructure easier. Uh, also, you have an option to create different modules to, to uh, not to uh, not to have a repetitive code in your um, in your repository. And then it's open source, so it's much easier to, to for example, create a different provider for your, um, for example, the for your service that is not uh, is not already like possible to connect by telephone. So you can write it on your own. Um, every um, like bug feature is is also implemented in in GitHub, so it's really uh, accessible for for the um, community. Okay, so let's move to the live demo. And of, of course, we prepare for the best, but uh, as always, something will, uh, of course, something will can come up. So I hope that, uh, that it will run just smoothly. Um, how to start with how to start with Terraform? How to how to uh, how to use it? The the most the most uh, the easiest part, the easiest part to start with the telephone, the easiest step to start with is to use the base uh, article on the Terraform page uh, called Azure Provider. And it has a really straightforward instruction how to start with it. Uh, I will omit the authentication, but it's quite easy with the Azure CLI, which you can use, uh, which I think that's all uh, that all of you use is for, for the, uh, managing your infrastructure when you use Azure. For the different providers, for, for AWS, for Google, it has its own like um, instruction how to use it. And there is some easy um, example of how to start with the, uh, the Terraform. So how to use it, um, how to use it. We uh, need to create the. Uh, we need to create resources. So resources are are, are written like that. Uh, we declare a resource by resource. So so we create uh, instruction like this. Create you a single resource, and a resource has its own um, uh, type. So it's called Azure RM. It's uh, from the resource man uh, resource managing of the Azure um, uh, resources. Then it holds resource group. So this resource will call will create for us a resource group, and this resource group is called in our script default. So it's the name that we can use to reference the different uh, resources between them. And then we can use a different attributes and values for um, for describing this tool. So we have name, we have location, and um, and we can reference this. This tool, these resources by its type and name, and how it looks in code. Let's move to code, and its uh, and configuration for simple resource group and uh, store it looks like that. At the beginning, you need some kind of uh, declaration of provider, so um, to tell um, Terraform that it it should use Azure. Then uh, we have um, different resources. At the beginning, the, there is a resource group. Then we have a storage account to put our files. And then we create container inside the uh, storage account. Um, as you can see, we have different, um, different attributes for, uh, for these resources. Our resource group is called Terraform Azure, and it's located in West Europe. Uh, Azure storage account is um, it's named Terraform Azure Test, and its uh, at its resource group is a reference to another resource created here. And the same is for for container. We reference a storage account. Okay, with this kind of configuration, uh, we need to initialize our um, Terraform. So how to do it? It's uh, to to initialize our. Um, Configuration we use Terraform in it, and it initializes the the Terraform, and of course it bases on provider. So as uh, for every provider that, that you described, it will download um, the um, the application how to connect with your provider. So it's very easy to to run. I have the uh, console created here. Let me close it. Uh, yes, and we are. And we are here uh, in the Terraform Azure. Ah, wait for a second. Unfortunately, you have to, to do one, one simple thing here. 
Okay, and right now it will work. Okay. Okay, and uh, to run this uh, to run this configuration, we need to um, to to type terraform init, and it should, and it checks that we have a provider inside of our code, and it will download a Azure provider. Wait for a second. As you can see, it terraform has been successfully initialized. Okay. Then the most important part of the Terraform, Terraform plan. So uh, before it uh, changes your infrastructure, it shows you what's the plan of changing it. And this is really an important part of the Terraform because it's, uh, it allows you to, to get an insight what is going to happen when you run your scripts. So it starts uh, generating a plan what's to be, um, what's to be uh, created, changed and removed. So it's, check the current state, and based on that current state, it runs particular comments. And the interesting thing is that you can save this plan to a file and then uh, later on reuse it in some other, um, some other uh, activities. So let's start it. Let's write down Terraform plan. It checks your current infrastructure, and in a second, it will return the code. Oh, as you can see, there was a lot of code. So with the information here that, um, that there will be created a few services at the, the, big, at the uh, bottom of that, you have the information that there is a plan to create three different services, uh, zero to change and zero to destroy. Then uh, from the top, get the information what will be created. So uh, Terraform is going to create uh, Azure Research Group, then Azure Storage Account, and then the top and the bottom, Azure Storage Container. And all the informations uh, here are based on our uh, script that we uh, just uh, seen here, okay? And then to run this uh, to run this plan, we need to um, to type Terraform a plan, and then it runs a particular plan. Um, so it starts to uh, get through it and creates its re uh, these resources um, one by one to have a desired state um, in your um, on your cloud on your resource provider. Uh, and it bases on the, an existing plan or, uh, or created from scratch. So you can uh, create the plan uh, as I shown before and then like use it to, to run this Terraform or you can uh, just create this plan from scratch and only accept it. So let's use it once again. We, let's, you, let's run Terraform apply. It will regenerate the whole um, plan and will ask you if you want to accept it. Let's accept it and it starts creating resources. It can take a while. As you can see, resource group has been already created. Okay, it created a, um, it created three resources. Um, let's check it on on Azure. Um, yes, and I'm. Um, I'm still checking if it's already created or not. And yes, it's created. So let's open the Azure. Okay. And let's 
to refresh it once again. As you can see, we have a Terraform. We have a resource group created just from our scripts. We have a storage account here, and inside of it, there should be a container called Terraform. Uh, it's kind of tricky thing when you um, when you run your uh, when you run your Mm, Terraform scripts because these uh, these resources are not are not visible on the Azure portal immediately. They are visible by some mm, delay about ten seconds, uh, and it's kind of strange because like you've had the information here that you've already created the service, but it's not visible on uh, the Azure. So mm, mm, so. Okay, so we created these services, but uh, what's about the state? How the Terraform knows what's the state of our infrastructure? And the state of our infrastructure, it's it's uh, it's, um, uh, it's stored in the in the state file. So uh, the uh, the Terraform stores the current situation in a, a file to uh, to to have an understand uh, to have an understanding what's the the situations uh, on our cloud and which. Uh, services are managed by Terraform. Um, this, this Terraform state is kept locally, or you can uh, you can put it in the remote storage. Of course, the uh, keeping it locally is um, uh, is, un, is not secure, and uh, it should be used only for the development purposes. And the, the most um, um, desired one is to to have it on some some the remote storage and. Uh, and uh, the, the tricky thing is that the whole data is stored in JSON and the whole uh, information about your services are, are stored like that. So uh, when somebody has an access to this, the, to these uh, resources in your, in your state, then they could have a whole information about your um, infrastructure uh, on a plain site. So you should secure it. For example, in a, uh, in an Azure storage uh, co container, um, and to store it privately. And the most important thing is that you shouldn't uh, change it manually. Uh, you should change it by the uh, by uh, by running the scripts against Terraform, uh, because uh, in that way uh, Terraform knows what the current state uh, and knows how to uh, how to manage it uh, correctly. And uh, let's um, let's go back to our scripts. Uh, I have here uh, commented call that uncommented, and the information that uh, Terraform uh, should store the state inside of uh, the Azure storage uh, account. Uh, and as you can see here. Um, our state is uh, visible uh, on on our screen, and the whole information about this uh, this. Um, these resources are accessible on a, uh, in a plain text. So, um, uh, if you would, uh, if you um, if you prepare any uh, if you prepare any resources that uh, that that would store the um, configuration, the passwords, um, for example, some Cosmos DB, these passwords would be visible here uh, as well. So. So it's not desired uh, situation, and then, therefore we like to to move it into the cloud. So let's run it by by uh, by uh, typing Terraform in it once again, and we'll check that okay we have uh, information about the backend. Mm, there is information that there is already a backend probably from the uh, from the previous uh, demo. So let's override it. And we moved our uh, Terraform state to the cloud. Here um, we have no information about the Terraform state, and in the cloud it should be visible inside of our container. And the state is accessible here. So we've uh, we've covered the basics of the Terraform, how to use it, and how to store your state securely in cloud. Scarce, but but of course there are some basics. So let's move to some uh, advanced features. Uh, Terraform has a um, uh, has a whole has a like big range of features, and I think the most common uh, ones of uh, of using it uh, are, are these ones. So we need of course some kind of variable. So how to use uh, so how to use our um, our scripts based on some additional information. And I will try to show you how to, how to use this kind of like features in the repository when we will create 
resource group, storage account, and two additional uh, virtual networks. So let's move to the uh, move to the example number two. We have the different files here, as you can see. We have the, uh, the mains, locals, networks, out and, um, and providers, and variables. Uh, the important ones for, for this presentation is that we have uh, variables here. So this kind of like the inputs to your uh, to your service. We can uh, we can create a type sensitive um, variable so uh, the telephone will validate the inputs that you try to provide it for uh, provides to the scripts or you can have some kind of default uh, variables. How to use it? Uh, it's it's uh, really uh, easy. Uh, let's change the uh, catalog. This is a Terraform plan var. And just like that, you, a Terraform will be run against your uh, current configuration with some input from outside. Mm. Then we like to have uh, some kind of locals, not to uh, not to create a repetitive code uh, to have even some kind of like validation about our naming as a Terra. So we can have a, a, a information about the uh, locals here. So as you can see, I created a, a resource group name called uh, Terraform Azure uh, 2. And the first network, the second network name will uh, base on this, um, this local. And the storage account name um, will be, um, uh, will use the same local here, but also will run some additional function to uh, omit, uh, to replace uh, all uh, dashes with empty uh, string. Um, and, uh, and with this kind of like option, you, you can have a much simpler, much uh, understand the understandable situation in your code. Then uh, you can uh, you can uh, you you can have also some kind of information that will uh, Terraform um, provide to the next script. So, for example, you, try, you like to have some uh, passwords, some uh, some keys, some uh, IDs that will be uh, used uh, in a uh, further uh, configuration in the further scripts. And as well, you can have a situation and the configuration about it. So you'll uh, write information about the output and uh, the name of this output and the information that um, the, the, the value of this output will be in storage account uh, ID number or and for the storage account key will use a primary access key to this to this um, to the storage account and the interesting situation is that uh, we can um, configure this output as sensitive so it won't be visible in console. So like if you have uh, some kind of tool that uh, makes your whole um, running your whole script visible, as, as I shown in console, it will uh, not, this storage account won't be visible here. But I think the most important part is that integration with uh, CI/CD pipeline, so we can run your infrastructure in cloud, and therefore create uh, create a, a automatically managed um, solution there. So uh, I have a um, configuration for for Azure DevOps, uh, but I I think that you can use any uh, CI/CD tool that you use on a daily basis, uh, and I have a simple configuration here. Um, let's focus on the most important parts that in, in my pipeline, I uh, start with installing Terraform, then I um, run initialization, and then I run apply. So I automatically create uh, my infrastructure based on, your, on, uh, on the code here. Of course, in production environments, you shouldn't, you wouldn't use it like that. You'll have some kind of like test environment, some kind of pre-approvals, et cetera. But let's uh, have a simple solution here. So you write uh, apply, um, and then you have some options to, for not to approve it, to make it automatic. And you can provide some um, parameters from outside, um, um, from outside key storage. So you don't need to type 
all of the information skills. Of course, you can use some environments, variables, and etc. So let's run it. Let's uh, let's uh, show you that the, it's uh, this code actually works. Let's create some um, blank commit. Okay, let's push it. Okay. Okay, it's, it's in our cloud right now. And as you can see, as you can see here, this particular uh, commit run a build and this build is already running. So it, of course it's um, it starts with checkout then it installs a Terraform and it's uh, initialized the Terraform inside of the, um, inside of the uh, pipeline and then it starts uh, applying it. And as I said before, it takes a while to, uh, to run this particular um, configuration here. Okay, the script um, is, is finished. And uh, as you can see uh, here, we have our, um, we have our, um, our providers, uh, our providers. Uh, we have our resource group here as well with uh, two virtual machines. Uh, the first is configured based on our, uh, based on the values from the pipeline. And inside of the logs, when uh, at the bottom of the uh, apply, you can have, you can, you could see the outputs here. So the whole uh, running it uh, inside of our CI CD pipeline is it's very straightforward and easy to start with. So uh, I really recommend you when you start the, your journey with Terraform to start with a CI CD uh, process really at the beginning, not to leave it on uh, some late stages because every every step it's much, it's uh, harder to, um, to introduce it because of the other things that are current in, in product project. Okay, um, there are, yes, these are like the really interesting features, but of course we can have more, we can have, of course we can have more, yeah? So I'd like to show you some, some additional features that uh, are currently, uh, that I am currently using on my website to, uh, to have a whole infrastructure of my, um, of my blog uh, inside of the uh, Terraform scripts. And uh, I use modules because uh, I have two environments. I have production environment, test environment, and I can uh, check my, uh, my post, uh, I can check my post before releasing it to the productions. I use multiple providers because I, I use, uh, of course, Azure, but also um, Cloudflare to manage uh, DNS and domains. Uh, and also um, I, uh, Azure DevOps to manage my uh, CI-CD tool. So, so you can say that I manage CI, uh, like CDI-CD tool inside of the CI-CD tool. This kind of like inception in our, uh, in my code. And, uh, and what I used uh, for this configuration, I used not standard providers because configuration to my CI-CD tool, Azure DevOps was not already um, like provided by Terraform and some, some uh, some people on GitHub has already created a, a non-standard provider to to Azure Dev, and therefore I use it. I I download it and compile it, and I and I run it against my uh, infrastructure, and therefore I could use it uh, on my own. Uh, you can write your providers as well. So how uh, how uh, it looks like? I have a page and it's stored on GitHub. You can access it and you can actually check the, the, web, the website. You can check these scripts. You can check its, its, its commits there. And I have a Terraform configuration here. 
I have three environments. I have uh, environments common, which are the package for the um, for the things that are not currently connected to the particular um, environment. I have environment test. I have environment prod, and I have modules. And I have seen one module called Azure when I store uh, information uh, which are um, used for these two environments. Inside of this uh, first environment, I, uh, I have a different provider. So as you can see, I have three providers here, Azure Cloudflare and Azure DevOps. And um, for example, I use uh, Cloudflare to create a zone and to manage my, uh, my two um, domains, Radek Maziarka and Radblock. And also I manage here my uh, Azure uh, DevOps uh, project to store information about my project, about connection to the GitHub, about my build definition. So I have a build definition configured in Terraform file, which points to particular repository on GitHub. Then I have a, I have an infrastructure, I have an environment here, which, which uses modules here. So you, you can reference the, the particular module and run the code which is stored inside of, inside of it. And in the in, uh, in, uh, in module of Azure, we have the whole infrastructure connected to this particular environment to test environment. And also, uh, and, um, and besides the, and besides uh, the, Mm, the configuration of Azure. I also I also manage connection between Azure and Azure DevOps. And for example, I create here um, some um, service service principle to to connect to um, from build to my resources. And uh, at the uh, at the bottom, I I create a service connection to allow um, to allow to to put my files of my website into the uh, Azure, uh, Azure storage. And based on that, I have a whole, my, my whole black uh, block uh, running and I can manage its infrastructure based in code. And how, is, how it looks like is that I have a configuration here. Mm. You can see I have a three, uh, three um, resource groups. And for example, I have a production one. I have only a, a storage container here, which uh, stores files of my, my static websites. Then I have a, uh, then I have a, um, I have a pipeline here, which uh, bases on the configuration here and it deploys uh, changes uh, to production. Currently I have even a post to, uh, to put inside of the, the blog, so let's approve it. And the new post will move from, te from the test environment to prod environment. And just like that, I can upgrade my, uh, my post to the new environment. Uh, and as well, I manage the whole uh, Cloudflare configuration um, from the Terraform. So it's uh, all configuration here, for example, names uh, of the storage account um, are like are, um, are configured automatically. So I don't need to, to, uh, to, to type there any information. It's, uh, it is automatically taken from the Azure uh, configuration here. So, uh, so, so it, I automated it uh, so much then in some point when I had to change this in configuration from, um, from old, old website to the new one, when I like finally managed to, to cover whole transition from WordPress to the new blog, I just switched one flag in Terraform and it created a, a, a new DNS uh, entry here and it um, put uh, a traffic to the new environment. And thanks, thanks to that, as you can see, this is still, uh, this is still copying files, but the, the new post about cloud infrastructure management is right here. So it's easy the, the, the managing of the whole infrastructure because you don't need to focus on only one provider. Where, for example, okay, we have a whole, um, in, in, we have a whole infrastructure code to manage our uh, 
a, uh, our Azure environment, but still we need to manually type uh, information about our uh, DNS in Cloudflare. With Terraform, you don't need to uh, to manage it manually. You can have this the, this whole infrastructure code inside one uh, one one repository. So it eases the configuration very very much. And of all scores, it's not. Uh, it's not the only thing that Terraform like allows you to have. Oh, moreover, it allows you to have a prov provisioner when you can run some um, additional scripts after creating uh, after creating some resources. For example, you like to uh, run script after creating uh, virtual machines. You can use it uh, during um, with the help of provisioners. You can use expressions. You can, for example, create a loop to create. Um, 10, 20 resources. It's uh, very, um, um, it's worth very good when, for example, you need to create DNS entries based on some kind of list. Uh, it eases the, um, the reading of the, the whole configuration. You can use remote state, so you can like connect to some other state and to take values from it. For example, when you need to connect to some other teams in some situations. And, uh, and also you can use workspaces to have a, the same have a same configuration, but different environments based on that. So you do, you in, in a second you create you could create a multiple copies on your environment, which is extremely valuable when you like to have some kind of like automation of, uh, for example, automated tests. Uh, it works very well uh, with this kind of approach there. Okay, but uh, it was already like 40 minutes of my presentation, so I think it's time to, to stop, to sum it up. So I'd like to end this presentation with uh, a few like practices. So first and most important is to secure your state because like without it, your state will be like accessible to anybody and take uh, uh, all the information about your client in infrastructure from that, all passwords or, or keys, uh, et cetera. So you should store it as I shown uh, in this um, in this uh, demo, for example, in the storage account in the secure container, then you should use parameters and locals to avoid repetition in in your code and to allow uh, modularity uh, of your uh, of your code. Uh, then, um, especially in the beginning, you should plan your changes. You should check if the changes you are applying are not uh, like removing some some resources that shouldn't be uh, be removed. Uh, later on, when you have like implement, when you've, uh, implemented a whole, for example, in, um, infrastructure test uh, with your CI/CD tool, it's not required. But at the beginning, it's worth spending your time on it. Uh, I really recommend to upgrade your um, upgrade your um, Terraform and providers uh, files because the new changes, new upgrades, uh, new um, services are added uh, there on a daily basis. Um, so it's really worth uh, worth being um, on the top of the um, changing list. And then uh, I really recommend you to learn this Terra Terraform tool step by step. At the beginning, you could be overwhelmed by the number of information, but then gradually adding uh, one services by one, you will learn how to use it um, really fluently uh, and effectively in your code base. So I, I, from my uh, perspective, I really recommend using this tool. Of, okay, and it's uh, all and it's uh, all from my uh, site. Uh, I um, recommend you to check my website, www.radigmatricapl.terraform.n, uh, and to get an, uh, materials and uh, this presentations. Um, if you would like uh, to get uh, to know about it, uh, about this tool deeper. Um, so it's, it's all. Thank you for that, that presentation. If you have any questions, uh, please write it down. And I think um, and I think this this um, this question will be provided to me by Marta. Yes. So I don't see any questions right now. Uh, and I don't think uh, something will come up. But if something comes up, uh, you all have a contact to Radek and his mm -hmm. website. 
So uh, thank you, Radek. Uh, that mm -hmm. was a really cool uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. um, once again, a big bravo to our speakers and thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Uh, if you want to follow our next events, please check all the links below the transmission or follow our Facebook pages. Uh, also, in a couple of days, we will share the recording of today's speech here on our YouTube channel. And uh, once again, if you would like to meet Hanya, our recruiter, you may sign up uh, for a chat with her, book your time in the Calendly, the link you may find also below the transmission. So uh, thank you once again and have a good evening. Thanks for that. And uh, I wish you a pleasant evening as well. Bye. Bye-bye.